Okay, let's call the, uh, what's the date? November 2nd uh, meeting of the Nantucket Conservation Commission order. Um, we have some continuances. Oh, okay. I'll mention the continuances first and go to the public meeting. How about that? Okay. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, okay if, uh, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, so, and if anybody is recording this meeting, please let us know. Please silence your cell phones. We appreciate it. And we'll go right to the public meeting. Do, oh, now everybody's coming. Good. Does anybody have anything they would like to discuss that is not on the agenda tonight? Okay. No? Good. So we're going to go to the public hearing. Notice of intent. We have a bunch of continuances here. We have um, Edwin Snyder, Revocable Trust, to Brock's Court, continued till November 16th. Sunset Hill, LLC, continued till the 16th as well. And Nantucket Island Land Bank, 17 Commercial Wharf. It is continued till December 14th. Oh, and also Burke, 37 Gardner Road, is continued till November 16th as well. Can I make an announcement too? Please do. Really says. Um, just as a quick announcement to everyone here, just a reminder that for Veterans Day, our office is closed next Friday. So the information deadline for the next hearing is really more like next Thursday. So for any of those who you continue to get stuff in or stuff gets continued tonight, uh, to try to get everything by next Thursday instead of Friday, will be closed. You can come down and try to get in all you want. Uh, next? Next Friday. Chris, this list actually says Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, no, no. That's the, the, that's the filing deadline, filing deadline. But yeah. the supplemental information deadline would be oh, Thursday. Oh, oh. So if anything from tonight nice. would be by next Thursday. We're trying to give us a little extra day to help out the paper with the Veterans Day holiday. So we need right. to wait a bit for new applications. So <coughs> new applications are Wednesday. New applications are Wednesday. Continued information is Thursday. And then I think our, since we're going to daylight, so we're back to regular time. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. We'll move our site visits back. Again. Yep, our site visits will go back to 3 p.m for the next hearing as well. So we're not going in the dark. Okay. Yes. Yes. Got that? <laughs> okay. So you lose that hour of daylight that's going on right now. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. Some might call it the more in the dark, the more often. Dark. All right. Okay, I'm all set? Yes. Okay, so we're going to start with Alan A. Shutch, trustee, 45 Quidnet Road. He's not here. He's not here. This is what we continued last time. Yep. Mr. Chairman, just a reminder. We were waiting for a determination from Mass National Heritage, yep. which we have received, and they had a letter of no take and uh, no adverse impact under the Weapon Protection Act. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was the only piece of information that we, we were waiting, waiting for, for, unless Sarah or Bob had. Okay. Um, really to wait, unless you want me to say anything, I don't need to. <laughs> Does anyone need a recap? <laughs> <laughs> anyone, need a re anyone need a recap or anything of what this project was? No, no, I'm good. Okay. I'm, I'm good. good. Yeah. So, um, so no questions. No questions from the public on this one. I doubt it. No, okay. And uh, we have everything to close. Yes. And would you like to close tonight? Yes. Okay. Do we have a motion to close? Motion, motion to close. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for taking so much. Uh, Rays, 19 East Creek Road. applicant Paul Santos with Nantucket Surveyors uh, and representing the applicant uh, Stephen Cohen uh, attorney. Uh, this was in uh, notice of intent for the uh, demolition and reconstruction of an existing single-family home located at 19 East Creek Road 
Uh, I know many of you did a site visit out there on a Monday site visits. We opened our hearing uh, last time with a minimal amount of information regarding what the future plan was for the property. Um, and also we did not have NHESP um, correspondence at that time. We also did not have a DEP file number, so we continued the hearing till tonight. So I'd like to start by giving you a, a few more um, exhibits here that we can walk through as part of the presentation. This is a full size of that. Oh, this one actually makes that. I just ex expanded on that map right there. So again, to refresh your memory, this is um, an existing parcel located um, northerly of um, our island home, which is a property owned by the town of Nantucket. It's essentially located on the creeks. It's an, it's an existing residential uh, dwelling that was built uh, in the mid to late 80s. Um, it's a single family home with access off of East Creek Road. Um, the resource areas are uh, the creeks itself, and you have a salt marsh associated with the creek. You have the entire properties and land subject to coastal storm flowage, and we do have a policy, um, DEP policy, coastal bank, uh, located along, essentially along the southerly uh, boundary line of the property, uh, which is the line between the property itself and our island home or the town of Nantucket property. Um, the plan that you have in front of you um, with the yellow on there, if you'll notice the existing structure is grayscaled uh, in the <coughs> background of, the, of that drawing. The new structure is darker and kind of forward of it. There is an inset detail, which is just the new dwelling um, as it would sit on the subject property. Um, and that is to the upper right-hand corner of the, of the page. The area that you see in yellow is currently area that is occupied by either a uh, small portion of deck, um, the structure, and so forth that would then be uh, removed, if you will, to increase the, the setbacks from the, the salt marsh area. The site itself, essentially that north facing deck is essentially right on the existing salt marsh. Um, the yellow area would be the removed area um, of that existing decking. The, there are two setbacks. There's a 6.2 foot setback and a 12.6 setback. Those would be setbacks that would be achieved from the existing salt marsh with that area essentially being reclaimed um, as vegetation. Uh, what we would be proposing is invasive removals within that area. So the building itself um, does uh, expand in length and it gets pulled back and rotated somewhat on the site to achieve a somewhat better <coughs> separation between the salt marsh and uh, the existing structure. The area table that you'll see at the lower section of the, the plan depicts the existing ground cover, which is 1,600 square feet. The proposed ground cover would be 1,950 square feet. The existing decking and stairs is approximately 975 square feet. We'd be proposing 575 square feet of, of decking and stairs. So the total existing structure uh, essentially on the property is 2575. The proposed would be 2525 or a decrease of approximately 50 square feet. The structure in the 25 foot setback is approximately 1855 square feet. What we are proposing under this scenario is 1640 square feet of structure in the 25 foot um, setback. The building itself, if you look more so to the, the detail uh, up in the upper right hand corner, 
and then kind of I can walk you through. This is looking. This would be looking from the creeks um, to the property. There is uh, an existing smaller mass here with a deck off of the structure. No stairs um, off of the deck. That deck is accessed solely from the uh, from the inside of the dwelling. There then is a small connector between the smaller mass and the larger mass. That connection has a again a wrap a deck which extends out in front of the the, the, the building with a porch. Again, no access um, other than through the existing structure to that deck. And then as you move over to the section over here, this lower mass, there is a stairway um, up and down here which would come in off of the driveway, the driveway section of the property. Um, the structure is proposed. There is a the east elevation. There's also the north elevation. Uh, there would be no um, garage under this scenario. It would simply be a uh, structure without any type of um, garage uh, component to it. As we know, the existing structure does have a uh, does have a garage component to it. Uh, there was some question on the existing structure whether or not that garage was part of the original permit plans. It was. Um, building plans at the building department show that garage, um, show the structure, um, and essentially the same shape and size that it that it is now. Uh, it is um, a structure that's completely constructed on a pile foundation um, or, or piles. We would have to to meet the flood zone standards, um, achieve, use that same format for any the work that we're proposing here. Um, the we did include a. A first floor plan here for what it would be worth, I guess. Um, and I don't have a second floor plan, but the second floor plan, if you looked at this massing, is essentially just this section here is the only area where you'd be achieving a second floor on the existing on the on the proposed dwelling. Uh, then I've also included somewhat of a comparison uh, the existing view from the from the salt marsh, so you get a sense of what's proposed and then what is what is existing when you look at them um, through that scenario there. Um, the applicant would be, what we were proposing under this situation is due to the location of the, the more up-to-date 2014 flood zone mapping, we are anticipating that the existing structure would be elevated approximately uh, two feet from its present first floor location. Um, to meet the V zone. It's not essentially in the V zone, but it's in an area defined as moderate wave action, which is essentially carries with it some of the same V zone standards. Under the ninth edition of the building code, there's going to be some more restrictive um, uh, freeboard requirements with elevation. So we've assumed that if this structure would get built, it may be done under the ninth edition. Um, so I've put an approximate two foot um, elevation rise on the existing, on the existing structure. The building uh, would be, so that existing structure that you have now, from the existing decking uh, to the peak of the roof on this scenario. So in this area here, um, from decking to roof is about approximately 17 feet. Uh, the new dwelling has approximately a 19 foot um, profile. And then the area that would change over here, the massing over here, goes to approximately a 24 from the from the from the decking of this this plan that you're looking here. Decking to the top is about 24, so it's about a, a seven foot difference uh, along that main where that second floor is is being achieved. Um, so that's from the deck to the top of the. <coughs> floor. Then remember everything is then coming up by two feet. Right, the deck is coming up two feet. Everything coming so up it's four two feet. feet. Addition to that, yes. So it's four feet more. Yeah. That's right. The mat, the building itself yeah, is too, but yeah. you're then you're popping everything up to yeah. and, um, and we think there's some wiggle room in that when yeah. we start engineering. Yeah. So hopefully, when the when we start doing the engineering, as far as an engineer gets looking at it and comes up with maybe because the V zone standards have, it's it's the lowest structural member as opposed to the first floor. So mm -hmm. now everything is is climbing based on the on the V zone standard. Um, and again, if it can be done under the eighth edition of the building code, mm -hmm. you know we may. Lose another foot, kind of under that under that scenario. Um, the the site presently is serviced by Town Water and Town Sewer. That would not change. Um, there actually would be no change 
Um, there's an existing sewer pump pit. It would stay in the same exact spot. The connection is southerly and then down through the Goldberg property, the easement out to Orange Street. Uh, there would be no change uh, anticipated to any the, the water connection or the sewer connection. Um, the driveway would essentially stay in the same spot it currently exists. Um, there would be no change to that. And the um, moving of the building away from the salt marsh area, you know, in, a, in basically doing that would elongate the, 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 the structure itself, um, but would move away from away from the, the, the salt marsh area. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we... Well, just follow your thinking. Yep. The, the other thing that we really tried to do was break up the massing, uh, which I think has two successful uh, features. <coughs> One is that it, it mitigates any impact on the wetland scenic views, but it also enabled us to put the uh, majority of the decking between those two massings instead of in front of it, which, which I think creates this tremendous ability to move the, the structure away from the wetland by 12 and a half feet, um, where it was basically at zero before. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing, and, and we've eliminated a lot of those stairs that were currently in the wetlands, so that you'll see none of the decks currently are proposed to have any stairs. They're, they're only interior access um, with the staircase coming uh, currently uh, out of the driveway. So we're basically mm -hmm. taking 650 square feet of structure that is in essentially in the wetlands and moving it to what's now the driveway, which we think is a very uh, successful relocation of that structure. And 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 again, the building that you're looking at is not HCC approved. It's conceptual. It has uh, about a um, thousand square feet on the top right now. The current building has about 1,200 square feet on the top, so we we have a little bit less uh, a second story. And we're also going to be proposing a building with no uh, white paint, and uh, it should have a more uh, muted impact than the current building, which I think you can see in the in the picture in your file has a lot of white gables and white balusters and white, you know, basically the whole thing. Um, so the what we're, we're trying to achieve a um, minimal impact. And I will say one thing about the the, um, the east elevation is that the 32 is a little bit deceiving. Um, it caught my attention, obviously, when we first looked at it. But in looking at it further, the 32 is more so from an elevation if you were out in the, the marsh area. It's a lower elevation. So so if you would, that 32 is kind of looking from the elevation, say, 2.5 or 3 out in the marsh, when really the building is sitting up more so at elevation 5 or so. Okay. Uh, my, my 7, my, the numbers we spoke about, um, the, the <coughs> 7, to the, uh, that's all <coughs> with regard to building, but as far as this 32, that's really more so looking at it from out in the, out in the marsh, so um, you may, you know, it's, it's probably a two foot difference, um, just because the building is more, is further up onto the site than, than what that elevation would, um, would depict. Okay. And, and <coughs> by eliminating the garage, we're eliminating the building, the portion of the building, which I think is about 400 square feet that's currently slab on grade. So, I mean, we came in originally, as I said, with that kind of vague box. This is a more definitive plan. Um, be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I tried to make the plans a little bit clearer to, to understand. Oh, we're much clearer. We've Thank done you. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you. I don't know if it's made it any more appealing to you, but at least it, it, visually, I think it works better, and it kind of gives you an idea of what we're what, what we're talking about. Are we still basically being asked to approve a vague box or to move forward? For an application. Well, no, this is. You'd be, I'm just wondering, yeah. You'd be I'm approving this, okay. and any fine tuning or amendment to that would either require us to okay. have an amended order of condition or a minor mod. However, yep. um, you know, staff felt it would be deviate from this. I don't think it would change thing. much more than this. Okay. Um, we're limited. This is basically tucked up against the rear yard um, setback, which is 10 feet. Um, yeah. You know, lengthwise, I, I don't think. I think this is a. Very close depiction okay. of what yeah. somebody could do out here. We, okay. we would have to go to the HTC, and oh. and uh, I don't see them giving more. <laughs> so yeah. so I think this is the the maximum. Although there might be a little fine tuning in the. You so know. your vague box is delineated here by saying building envelope. So but that's not. That was just no. It's the, just the the is just right. to say that's yeah. non-spacer yeah. user. Yeah, that's right. that's just conceptual to show you the blue box that was on. Yeah, the just want to make sure it's a yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, no, no. that's fine. So, yeah. to, to help try to clarify that, I think for everybody, if you guys were to issue a positive order of 
conditions on this, the plan that you would be referencing as the plan of record would be probably the big one that's there, or this exhibit plan, which doesn't have the blue box on it, is you'd the be approving the, yeah. the shape that's shown on the exhibit plan in front of you. So if the blue box was bigger, the blue box is smaller, doesn't make a difference, the plan that you would be issuing a positive action on would be this specific plan. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, I was out there this morning having a look at everything. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the existing deck is on piles? Correct. Yeah. So, it's not really impacting the wetland per se, except where the piles yeah. are. And, uh, I mean, well, my personal preference is I much prefer this design. And um, thank you for taking this into consideration. But it is, in fact, a, a full floor higher. Correct. Words, yes. So you're actually coming in with a substantially larger mass, mm. even though it's more, subjectively speaking, it's yeah. more elegant. And so I, am, I feel that sort of, you know, our brief is to when people come to rebuild and to withholding um, the scenic view in mind is to reduce the profile rather than increase it. So I'm in something of a bind here. Yeah, I think I, yeah, same sort of personally here. I mean, I like the idea of going into the driveway and pulling back to 12 feet <coughs> in front. I like that. I do have an issue with the height. I know that's more of an HCC thing, but I think you're yeah, right on the marsh, and there's very few buildings right on the marsh. And I, and I appreciate the less white paint aspect of it. But to me, it, I mean, I understand the drawing is different than a photograph. To me, it does seem a little heavier. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having difficulty telling, but there's more, there's more window and doors on this, like, area. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as, like, mm -hmm. light impacts to the wetland. That's all yeah. glass window. And then you kind of cancel out I'm just trying yeah, to no, I, I figure it out because I mean, that is that's a lot of yeah, light yeah. impact. I would I would assume that the HTC would require us to use non-reflective glass, and that's certainly not. You can see in the picture the reflection there. So I think the glazing will be that or less um, as when we get through the HTC, and it would be a better non-reflective glass compared mm -hmm. to what's there now. I mean that's yeah. Yeah, but also just humans with the lights on. That's what encourages bird strikes and things like that. Yeah. But right on the wetland, you don't want light from inside the house impacting as well. Well, I mean, that. I think there's plenty of glass and people there now. Um, there's also, I just want to note that there's only three bedrooms in this structure and there's no second dwelling. So, if the existing building stays in place, would it have to eventually be lifted to meet the Blood zone compliance, or is no, that the only, the, the only requirement would be if somebody came in and renovated that building, and the fair market value of the building itself or the renovations exceeded fifty percent, it would then trigger the need to bring the building into compliance. So when they look at that, and it, it, it's not the value of the property; it's the value of the building. So if I came in and said, "I'm going to completely gut and renovate this building, and it's going to be more than fifty percent of the fair market value of the building." If I'm at 55 or 60 percent, then that building would have to be brought into compliance with the current flood zone standards. Okay. That's the only trigger. I like that the slab goes away. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good tough call, but we're actually going to have to balance the impacts mm -hmm. of one set of. You gain in some, and you're, yeah. you know, yeah. you're, you're losing exactly. a little bit. I mean, I understand the height. You got a within flood zone. It's, I got the it's a very common thing <coughs> that's going to keep coming up for us in, in any, you know. In our jurisdiction. Also, um, I think we have to look at impacts during construction. Yeah, you know, this is a sensitive yeah. area, increased compaction, things like that. Right, right at the wetland. Right at the wetland. Right right yeah. uh, mm -hmm. You can't use any of the existing files. I think you, they may be able to. No, I mean, I don't right, know, grid wise, yeah. whether or not. Mm -hmm. Let's say for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, we certainly would if we can. We haven't had an engineer look at that. I like this. Everything would have to be done from the driveway, pretty much. They yeah. can't be behind yeah, it. Yeah, right. They can't get in front of it, so. It'd be interesting to see from a further, longer view 
for this thing, kind of like the proposed ridge line sort of superimposed over this. Yeah, I'd be curious. And, you know, just just to get a sense of really how far this is sticking out of the out of the ground, because we have two feet, which is basically putting the bottom of the deck at almost the top of that existing railing, and then over and above that we have the masses. Well, four feet. Right. Four yeah. feet. Four well, two right. feet for the deck so is being basically the first floor level is coming up two feet. Sure. Yes, right. And so then right. So halfway up two feet more maybe of structure right. on the low mass. Yeah. 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 Right. Because now you're getting that. Yeah, exactly. So you're talking like four. Right. Yeah. yeah. So let me let me talk to you about something that you don't care about at all, but sure. but it's somewhat of the reality here, which is that <laughs> this structure in this location is a very odd duck in the sense that it's a very valuable piece of land and it's a very not desirable house to accept perhaps the <coughs> owner that's selling it. And the the realities of the market are that anyone who's going to pay anything reasonable for this property is going to want a, you know, more than a thousand, twelve hundred, uh, sixteen, uh, twelve hundred square foot house. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think our client is being quite reasonable by coming in with a house that's only a thousand, um, uh, that's only 3,000 square feet, of which, um, you know, it's it's uh, 1,900 on the ground and another 1,000 above. That is a relatively modest house compared to the price for what you can imagine is the construction costs and the, uh, um, the land acquisition costs for this kind of property. You know, most people spending that money would have a house three or five times as big as what we're talking about here, which I understand you'd never approve. So, but, but the reality is, is that this, th because... This house is worth so little from a building department point of view, and um, yet co will command such a price. It, it basically can only live or die in what we're talking about here. Either, either, you know, the owners either you're essentially stuck with what's there, or as soon as you try to renovate it, you have to go to something. I think, I think we're coming in at sort of the, the reasonable end of what it would ever turn into. So <coughs> none of that matters to you, but I think it's you know like essentially the owner. You know, who's not our client is going to either be stuck with selling this house as non-renovatable, or if it can be renovated, then what does it turn into, and is this a reasonable direction to go in? Is this, you know, and I think it it is, and I think we're providing a real benefit by getting everything up out of the floodplain by pulling back from the um, uh, wetland. You know, I just don't see anybody who would come in and say, "I'd be glad to pay millions and millions of dollars for this house, and yet not not have any addition." Um, you know, and, and live with this footprint. It's not. It's not realistic. And so I think, essentially, moving this addition to the driveway uh, and pulling back 12 feet and creating, you know, eliminating 600 square feet of structure, 650 square feet of structure in the, in the uh, essentially in the wetland is, is a good benefit, uh, as well as the, the other stuff that fall under. Um, so, we're if we were dealing with new construction and there was this, you know, wide range that you could deal with, we could say, okay, you know, yes or no, but you're sort of essentially stuck with what's there or what's reasonable, and I think that this is what's reasonable, um, right? And I hope you would agree. I guess I don't know this. From what I gather from the previous hearing, this house that it currently exists there barely squeaked through permitting, right? It wasn't passed through the CONCON at that time. It went through the DEP. Not a matter, so but it's good for but like it's, it's, it's it, one of those it was issued a it, no, it was to, just a little bit of the history. It was originally denied by the commission. Mm -hmm. It was issued in a superseding order of conditions from the state. That permit lapsed. The owner then came back to the commission, and the commission actually ordered the issued an order mm -hmm. to the Conservation yeah. Commission adopting what the state had had for requirements under the superseding order. And then that's how it was built and constructed. And then certificate of compliances were all issued. I mean, it's, it's clean with regard to that, so. Right. I just, I think the ecosystem services provided from these two interfaces here to the public, to our harbor, are, are such that they need to outweigh the cost to potential homeowner. You know, and like home value that should go on the property. You know, it's kind of ne neither here nor there. Um, yeah. Steve was right. It really is. Yeah. It's um, nothing to do with us. No. And it's not in our purview. And uh, scenic views and everything else that everybody's going up is. Um, I like um, the suggestion that uh, they superimpose this on the existing building. 
seems to me is, is going to be significantly high and, and mm -hmm. larger to look at. And, um, <coughs> and not to mention the fact that it's hypothetical. Mm -hmm. so that was my deny. appreciate the presentation and it's a clearer presentation um, and I would hope you would go before the HDC with a building that was um, a single story building the same way as the old one with breaking up the mass like that as I would be much personally more sympathetic to that right um, I appreciate that I, I can guarantee you my client won't some other buyer who may or may not be my client will money Steel, unfortunately, yeah. that's not our purview. No, right, no, right. I, I, it's I, a very nice design. Mm -hmm. uh, I absolutely <laughs> agree with you that if we superimpose this design on that house, it's physically taller. I would also suggest that it's actually more muted and less of an impact. But, uh, you know, I think you guys can conceive of that enough. I don't know that that's, I mean, we, we all know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like in the area where it's skinny and short. It's gonna it's it's gonna be skinny and short in the area where it's tall. It's gonna be tall because it's four feet taller. Um, you know, I think we've done a really good job of moving the massing into the driveway, getting it out of the wetland, and uh, creating creating a benefit by moving that decking away. Um, if that sells it for you, and and getting that driveway up out of the ground. If that sells it for you, we'd be happy to you know make refinements to it. If it's not going to sell it to you, we can just move on to. Uh, there, there, there's basically no scenario where my client would move forward with a single story house. And just as a point, so we have, you know, one outstanding item is an HES booth, so, mm -hmm. so yeah. we're, we wouldn't be in a position to close today right. mm -hmm. anyway, and then Steve will make however we want to proceed with that. But we do have, I was in contact today with. Um, Emily Holt up there, and they did. We did provide them this because they were obviously wanted to see more specifics on the blocks too. Right. So this this has been provided to them, um, but we did not, as of this point, received any um, feedback of, of them. This is actually the map. The area is actually the marsh itself. It's not really in a map there, but it was close enough that we felt that it was you know um, justified them weighing in on, the, on, on it. So. Right. And, and just to, I think Ben and Ashley both brought up the point about uh, the control of construction here. We oh, assume nice, yeah. that you would have the most well, rigorous yeah, controls in the order of conditions, and that is not going to surprise anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. I, I would rather you guys tell us what you're going to do than yeah. us structure your order of conditions. Mm -hmm. You come in and say, this I mean, is what my contractor yeah. says he can pull off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that that is totally fair enough because it's not necessarily your job or Jeff's job to, to do that. But I think we would only go forward with that if the if the um, plan was something you were willing to work with. Yeah, I'm just trying to get an idea of how big. Well, I think we have. To, I think it comes down to this: Are we is this height of this house 16 feet. a non-starter? 16 feet. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's. Oh, I feel like I yeah. tend to go more for cable. recovery yeah. and resource area. Yeah. 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 To me, that's, that's generally more important to me than the yeah. look. And if this was the first house. In the creeks and in the harbor, that would be a different mm -hmm. story. But uh, but that you, you go out in the creeks and it, you look around it, and it's yes, there's houses everywhere yeah. around yeah. It, around it. Yeah. And this is not a you know, I mean, it is it is a change. But again, I think that it is, it's a bigger mass to look at for sure. And uh, we don't know what's going to happen on the uh, town property behind there either. I mean, that's all up in the air. <laughs> It's looking, it's oh. wetland scenic views, but kind of it's the other side. Well, yeah. it's looking in, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's a scenic view from the wetland, which right. isn't, I mean, you go it's to the creeks stuff. to be out in the marsh. And usually when, when I'm out there, I'm sitting in a kayak, so I'm looking at grass, you know. So um, I think that's a, discuss, <laughs> that's a discussion that we should, that's a discussion we should be having. Is this, yeah. is the, does this plan represent enough resource benefit that's that's the question. Does yeah. the resource benefit outweigh the scenic views? Would construction impacts? Well, that's we don't. That's what we don't know. Debatable. That's what we don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, we could we could certainly come back. We'd have to wait for the uh, Mass, Mass National Heritage uh, for two weeks, so we can come back with if you if this is 
something you think you could swallow with the right construction protocols, we can come back with that in two weeks. Well, um, I don't want to repeat myself, but um, you know, how much actual soil area would you lose if you put dormers on you know, a single story, as opposed to this full second story that you have? Yeah, I'm wondering if the gable ends make it look tall, those long. Those yeah. I mean, it's a... Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the original design was a shed, yeah. and I, it looked super wide. Oh, and even, so black yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, so I had them switch it to that because you, when you clip those those sheds, it really shrinks the, the yeah. impact, the visual impact. Um, there's not, you know, if you look at the interior, which I guess you don't have, um, mm -hmm. there, there's basically just a <coughs> room for a, a, a bed and a, yeah. you know, some very modest closet and... and uh, bathroom. It's not. Yeah. It's not a full second story. Yeah. It's a story. Yeah. No, it's only. No, it's a story. It's, it's it's not a full length or there are stories that are that high. The whole building isn't that high. Right. 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 So the interior space, you know, like the walls are a thousand square feet, but the usable area inside is pretty modest for two <coughs> bedrooms and a staircase and you know, yeah. a bathroom and whatever. Um, it's not. It's not as if there's massive program up there. Um, but you know, I could certainly work with the architect to see if there's some way to shave the height. But I think what, what, you, what you probably end, end up with is something that's more visually impactful but lower in massing. It's, it's this trick we run into with HDC all the time where right. the, the apparent massing is actually less than the actual and vice versa. Um, but we could, we could come back with a few different uh, roof options to see if, if it really has some impact. My guess is that we could shave some space but not actually have it look better or different. Only because I've been to 10,000 HTC <laughs> things. Yeah. Um, <coughs> yeah, I, I can see you guys shaving about a foot out of the height, but right. it's... it's uh, but, right, what's the net yeah. on that? It's yeah. it's a mathematical change. Yeah. yeah. One other thing is just a second means of egress. I think you're going to need another stairwell. What? Another stairwell. Uh, yeah, just, just fire, fire safety would probably come yeah. back with a second stairwell if we get you know, somewhere. I know that this was probably done in a rush, but... Uh, it, it took a horse <laughs> to add up that, you know, like quite a lot of pegging to get that, yeah, like that quickly. I think it's still wet on November 1st. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, you know, nobody's busy. No, I, I, I know how it works. <laughs> sure. so, I mean, I, I guess what I heard is that there are four or five members <coughs> who that this is a pretty good benefit, not some overwhelming benefit, but, but might be willing to consider it if we can show that we think that the can do can do with the construction in a way that's sensitive and uh, am I right or wrong about that? I think so. I think so. I think I think maybe. Yeah, I mean I'm not yeah. So I think it's I think what uh, we all like to see is a really detailed construction protocol. Mm -hmm. um, it really deals with runoff and cleaning up the site and yeah. And even a staging site. Yeah, staging. Sure. Right, because yeah. it can't be the landing parking lot that's right around the corner. Yeah. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, I just, I think we should be discouraging more construction in areas this close to wetlands. You know, I saying that there's tons of big houses on the wetlands. There are, but not this close. You know, even though we're moving a little bit further back, we wouldn't allow new construction this large no, right here. No, so just, we would never. You no, know, it's not place. really a, tr a trade off. Well, there's an improvement in cover. I mean, the deck, even though it was deck, and now you've got mm. area that stuff can grow again under there. That area being removed. So there's a net benefit there. I do appreciate moving back and letting yeah, this area regrow. I appreciate the slabs going. I mean, it's. it's and I think we have to look at the net benefit from land and compare that to the net cost and visual impact. And there's a building there now that's having a visual impact, and so they're adding to that impact, and they're taking away from the vegetation impact. So we have to balance it both ways. We can't just say, you know, um, they're having an impact because they're already having an impact on the right. land. So yeah. use there. Um, Joe, what do you... The ninth edition, what do you hear on that? <laughs> it's still kind of up in the air. They still haven't made a final decision. You typically, when they do adopt it, do they typically give you a grace period? Yeah. So if the ninth six edition gets adopted, I may have a six, six months. Yeah. yeah. To so get a building permit? Yeah. 
So I may look in a little bit because that may get, that may get me another foot lower if I don't have to design because the ninth edition standard is just more free board. You know, it's, we're just mm -hmm. pushing stuff further and further. Right. Uh, right. Right. You know, it's it's flood zone elevation plus two as opposed to plus one. I mean, they're just pushing things further and further <coughs> up out of the um, out of the way. So, uh, would you please also provide us with a profile to impose this on the existing one? Because the actual difference in height and that. Yeah, we can we can have it outlined yeah. and, and photoshopped. Is that you want yeah. both? Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, it's seven. I mean, it's remember this. This mass here is the, the building mass from the deck to the roof line is two feet higher. But then you're coming up another two, so that's four. But this main mass is adding that second floor. That's seven. I mean, that's right. Yeah, so I'd like to see. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Because you're getting that whole second floor. You're getting, you know, you're going from a seventeen. You know, the highest point from the deck to the roof line is seventeen feet. So you're going from not to nineteen feet. Then you're going to 24 feet, right. but then you're also going up right. too. So, okay. Well, we can. We'll come back. We'll we'll Photoshop it a little bit, and um, we will work on a construction protocol to see if that satisfies you. Does that mm -hmm. work? We mm have -hmm. yeah. 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 the other one. Yes. That one in front of Ashley. Not in my have to keep it. <laughs> yeah. We do need to so that's to exactly. So you're, you'd be like to ask to continue for two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we'll continue. Oh. I guess we could. Any public comment? Yes, we do have public comment. Sorry, I thought we just continue. Chairman, former Council. I'm going to leave that one. Reserve most of my comments for Chairman Farmer. Reserve most of my comments because we're just seeing this right now. Yeah. Um, but um, we do have some on the initial view, some fairly. Serious reservations, but perhaps there was discussion before I got here in terms of why they are merely not just pulling down an existing 1600 square foot house and rebuilding a 1600 square foot house, which is the standard normal operating procedure ever since I've been here since 2000. I understand they're pulling a bunch out of the 25 foot, but even that, ever since I've been up here, it's always been. A replacement of 1600 to 1600 mm -hmm. really didn't affect the, the 25 foot zone. Um, I'd also encourage, uh, we'll, we'll probably do it too, but we'll ask staff to sort of look at that the existing cert for the old um, order of conditions and see if what's on the ground right now matches up. <coughs> I see a couple of things that actually I know don't, don't. So before they should be asking them for a permit for you, they should probably deal with um, some of the things that aren't. And then also, um, in regards to scenic view, this is somewhat unique in that um, it's a budding town of Nantucket land. And as you guys may not know, the Conservation Commission, um, through state law, isn't just an entity that reviews development applications um, within their jurisdiction. They have the ability to con comment on conservation matters of a town. Um, your staff can certainly bring you up to speed on what what the Wetlands Act actually says and, and, and whatnot. Um, you've done it a couple of times, really not very often, but you've done it a couple of times. For this, you can clearly just go beyond your normal scenic view, um, discretionary view, and actually be um, representative for the town of Nantucket in terms of how this pr uh, new proposal is going to impact the public, the town of Nantucket, and the scenic view. So as you discuss that, I think in two weeks' time we can talk about it at that point as well. <coughs> and then finally, I would not be hesitant at all to relook at your bylaw. It's a lot stronger than it was when they originally <laughs> applied for this um, and got the permit for it. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's fine. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Questions? Okay. So, um, no, I, I do just want to give one number, which is that the existing house essentially presents as one major mass, and it's almost 70 feet long. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we've tried to do is reduce that to a building that's closer to about 42 feet. Is that right, Paul? I'm sorry. The, 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 the large piece? This piece here? Yeah. I think it was like 45 feet. 45 yeah, feet. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, we, we definitely are significantly reducing the um, sort of size of the large mass. Uh, the secondary mass, I think, is going to be pretty insignificant visually. Um, so even though we're a little taller, we've cut a big chunk out of it. Uh, 
But we'll, we'll come back with the information okay. that you requested. Well, Thank I, you. I would have to disagree with you, Steve. Um, so, yeah, uh, looking at the two, it looks much larger. You. And, um, but anyway, so I just, I'm afraid I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to agree to disagree on that. Okay. So. Well, at least you like the design, which is oh, not, yeah. not, not, <laughs> not relevant, but I will pass on to the architect that you <laughs> thought it looked good. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. So we're going to continue for two weeks. Okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, okay. 36 Parkmore Road and the Nominee Trust, 36 Parkmore Road. Good afternoon. <coughs> Brian Madden from LEC Environmental Consultants. Um, so we've submitted the formal uh, proposed restoration planting plan. I think that was in your pack. So mm -hmm. you, uh, additional copies here. Um, it was kind of split up into um, two sheets just for scale purposes. Uh, but basically this shows uh, what we've discussed to date. Um, the, the plants uh, that uh, were recommended by the commission. Um, uh, we are proposing to uh, remove the love grass within the restoration footprint and uh, reseed uh, with the native little blue stem Pennsylvania sedge, switchgrass, and native fescues within the upland buffer zone restoration area. Um, uh, we have keyed out the the yeah sorry that's <laughs> kind of chopped up a little bit. Um, this may be a little bit scale. Um, and the desired plants, uh, the, the woody saplings and uh, shrubs. Um, so again, just a little bit more detail, things we have discussed to date. Uh, for the restoration effort, we're, we're poised to uh, get into that immediately, um, uh, pending any final comments from the Conservation Commission. Um, so we want to take advantage of the warm weather while we still got it. Well, the only thing I would ask is that um, they'd be willing to continue submitting reports. I mean, we want to make sure this is successful. It's such a major <coughs> planting effort that um, three years, well, probably effectively two years post finish of work or two years um, may not be enough to know what some of the trees and things are going to do. <coughs> so I'd like to keep an eye on it since well, it's such a big... I, I think there's an opportunity and something that you guys asked me to try to puzzle out. And I think, I think I've initiated or, or thought of a way to deal with that. And I think unique to this kind of project we've put in conditions before that have required partial certificates of compliance other filings that are associated with it I think if it's a concern post construction to continue that you set up that essentially that last round of monitoring reports that comes in in the third year that that comes in instead of as a certificate of compliance comes in as an extension request mm -hmm. and part of the order and you force the extension of the permit to continue the monitoring. No, that's not something we've done before, but I think that's certainly within your purview to say that, you know, that the final monitoring report at the end of the third year shall accompany a extension request for the permit to extend it out to kind of keep it open to deal with monitoring for that full additional three years. Mm -hmm. I think in these cases, I think is a way to deal with it. I'm not saying it's good for people that are coming in to say, do other kinds of work, but I think in a situation where you're dealing with a fairly egregious violation that requiring that is not outside of your purview. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that, I think the plan is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, cases look appropriate. Oh, sorry. Thanks. I, I mean, I don't think uh, you know, anyone's uh, adverse to continued monitoring. Um, I don't know, I've never seen like a mandate to extend an order of conditions, but certainly routinely 
uh, we do monitoring post certs and you know we don't have yeah. any issues with that. It's an idea that I've floated by by council to oh. see if it was. Uh, I haven't heard back from, but uh, we thought it sounded like a, an interesting idea yeah. to do. Well, I mean, um, and again, I don't think it's something that we should, as a rule, be <coughs> doing on the permits. But I think it seems like a good way to go for this one. One that's, I think it would take a finding of something that ties this back to the enforcement action, and then a finding that ties that course of action specifically as a result of the enforcement. Um, so you're not having to do it on every project where you're looking at some sort of buffer zone replanting or, you know, an invasive species thing where you're looking at it is in cases where it's been triggered by enforcement, you say we need to make sure that it, it holds um, something we've looked into. So mm -hmm. you guys asked us just trying to get creative with how to get a longer life to making sure that a half acre replanting effort is complete. So. Yeah, I mean, certainly there have been con ongoing conditions as part of issued service. Yeah. And so, I mean, it could be tacked on in that sense. I guess, you know, if we could have op options available for yeah. how to handle that. And We're trying to see if that's even a possibility or maybe back to the more traditional route. Mm -hmm. So, we'll <coughs> see. Okay. It might be good on the, some of the large scale invasive species projects, too, where we're concerned about revegetation, you know, you know especially large tracks. Just anything that where we're looking really at revegetation and want to know are we actually getting native species successfully established in there? Yeah, I mean, I, I think our, our one concern that we've had, and the reason why I was looking at it in this avenue instead of the CERN, um, a lot of times orders of conditions that have been closed out and certificate of compliance issued don't necessarily always get carried forward on titles of properties transferred because they've been closed. They should but they don't always. And this is a way that if it's still open and active, that it forces its way if whoever owns 36 Pacamo now sells, it's stuck on the title, and it stays until it's satisfactorily done. And it can only happen for three more years. It's like you can say every three years you have to come file for more extension because it runs out of the ability to do it. Um, it was just trying a way to bypass, I'm not saying that they're selling the property, but a way to, to deal with that a little bit. I don't know if it would work as well, just as an example, on like a large scale property or anything like if it was a big land bank piece or conservation foundation where there's not going to be a property transfer mm -hmm. if a cert isn't sufficient. But it'd be interesting to see what, what council comes back with if that's even a possibility to do. Well, I, I would have thought that it differs from the normal um, brief that we have because it's an enforcement order. So I would have thought under the enforcement aspect of it, but uh, you should be able to monitor it until it has been brought back to what you're trying to achieve. So I would say it's, I would hope town council would take that point. He seemed to think so. He just wanted to see if it is something that someone had done before, how that was put together. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we've yeah. certainly seen a fair share of orders that go beyond the life of a permit, so, but I understand the need for added help. Yeah. And that's also one is you, you never give up your right to enforcement at any time. So you always mm -hmm. have that ability. We're not saying that it would be, you know, a good idea to issue an enforcement to check in on something, but if you had belief that there is a problem or, you know, we hadn't been getting after the fact, monitoring <coughs> reports, you could certainly issue out enforcement on that portion of an ongoing condition. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot easier with open permits than closed permits. Gotcha. Welcome to Fred. What's that? Can we try to go that way? I'll do my recommendation, but I think I think we're still vetting the plan. I need to get a final answer. Okay. So <coughs> in my opinion the plan looks good as far as the new vegetation goes. I would also say, too, if there's action we want to happen tonight for resolving that issue, and the plan looks good, if there's more information, you can certainly ask for it. But if there are aspects of the project, like the, the trees and shrubs that you feel are appropriate, you still have the ability to order that work to commence under the enforcement action. Because <coughs> that's still open. So. Hey, 
Yeah, it would be my uh, request right. to <laughs> make, <them out. laughs> yeah. so make, make that call and get started. Huh? With that request. Yeah, yeah, no, that was good. I looked at Just one question. These are both C mixes, correct? Correct. Both yeah, they'd be the hydro C. In the hydros. Is, is, when we can keep talking about hydro seed, I'm always under the impression that hydro seed is like fertilizer is mixed in with the seed. No, you can make your own. It is. Yeah. So, okay. No, it's just what comes out of the truck. It's always green. I assume it's not food and it grows so fast. That's what those lawn companies. Yeah, that's I wasn't sure how they, what that this point was being made. Okay. So, um, comments from the public on this one? Mr. Chairman, former employee and tech line council. I wasn't here last time, so perhaps um, Ryan's talked about it. First off, I probably wouldn't be asking this question if Brian, if I knew Brian wasn't involved in three years from now. But um, you can sort of treat this as actually a wetland replication problem. And mm -hmm. we all know uh, we problems we've had with wetland replication. Um, one thing that we did talk about, um, I think I brought it up to you with the town and Nantucket discussions, and I talked about it in more detail with Jeff at one point, was as part of order conditions requiring a performance bond, um, it probably would alleviate your concerns about the extension of permits, that if you have a fairly significant bond um, and you feel that the work hasn't done, been done appropriately, you can then utilize that bond to make it done, be done appropriately. Um, this might be an option for this year. Again, if I knew Brian was involved three years from now, I'm pretty confident you'd be here. <laughs> but you never know. Yeah, um, truly, you do, you do never know with these projects. So I really hope you consider that. This would be a good opportunity to start that practice and start that policy. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, again, I wasn't here last time, so I was wondering, um, is the existing vegetation going to be stripped off through you, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, we talked at least of specifically the grass we were talking about. Getting yeah, so... The, the woody debris is kind of stockpiled up in areas. That's all going to be taken off site. And then the love grass is going to be um, road filled and then raked out. Oh, great. Um, I just would suggest probably that um, Jeff could get out there during that um, when they actually are rototilling it out mm -hmm. so that they're not actually taking too much soil off site and they're actually just doing the vegetation yeah. as described. And that which would probably be a good idea. And, and one of the things we talked about last time that when we put together the, the order of conditions for this. Um, we don't often go for weekly, but I think we'd also talked about doing um, you know, weekly work logs and weekly inspections with everyone because I think, like Cormac said, lessons learned from the, the Hummet Pond Road wetland project is maximum kind of amount of oversight is needed for projects like this because you want to be sure it's done correctly because if you get going down the path and it's not going correctly or well, it's much harder to get back on track and the impacts that you're doing are much greater. So I think something like that where you can see what's going on on a daily basis and just kind of a schedule <coughs> weekly check-in for what's going on is something that is really probably a good idea on this. So that way if there is something that's gone amiss in there, um, you're only dealing with a couple days of activity and not a couple and just um, to get back to that performance bond um, thing, I also wanted to say that um, it's not a necessarily no a novel idea. The planning board does it. Um, it's a routine thing at the planning board, and they um, withhold that money, make sure that <coughs> the uh, infrastructure is um, uh, built according to their specs. They do inspections, and then they release the money um, as necessary. So it, it, it has been done in, in other instances. We've done it on other permits before, too. It's just been a while since uh, we've, we've done it. Um, we just don't fortunately have projects like this very often. Okay, so great. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. But if that's something you're interested in, I can definitely so, sure have the language for you that. Asked Mark yeah. Lego whether or not it was invasive. Which is the love. Yeah, the love yeah. grass yeah. is going. And then you also have a success criteria. Yeah, we're going to put one in, put a success criteria for this one. Well, I, I think this is more, I think the success criteria we were talking about before really relates to. Um, kind of the survivorship right what's going on so typically we would look at it and say 
are we looking at, you know, do we want to make sure that 95% of what's planted of the trees and shrubs is a viable plant and successful? Obviously, you can't necessarily do that, including the seed mix, because that'd be impossible. But I think for the big stuff, and then you could do simple metrics of, you know, if the remaining soil outside of that is, is stabilized and the majority of it's covered, um, it's a little harder to quantify. It's not quite as simple. Mm. Um, but you could definitely do a, like a percent cover in those areas because um, you're going to have a little bit of a, an ebb and flow in that depending on how, what time of year you're in there and what seeds take off and what don't. And, yeah. um, I don't think it's very realistic to set a, a percentage of <coughs> viable plants in that area because it's going to Stuff is going to grow in there, and it's more if you find what you're looking for, right? And that the soil is stabilized, and that your trees and shrubs are. But we can acceptable plants for that area. Biography is fairly level in there, isn't it? Or is it? Is there yeah, there's, there's some undulation going on there. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, it's we'll like blue with this one, right? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the IBW in the middle is, is kind of a lower. So yeah, I mean, we had talked about concerns about washout. Mm -hmm. You know, at least this fall, adding, potentially adding some straw just to stabilize. I don't know if we've asked this question before. Was this filled with trees when it was mowed down? Uh, it, it appears that there was some saplings or, or mature trees okay. in there. I mean, we can only infer based off of aerial interpretation what we see in the surrounding levels. Mm -hmm. so. There was a fair amount of sassafras surrounding the area. Mm -hmm. um, there still is within the untouched areas. Um, yeah. yeah. But I can say when, when we looked at the, when we first looked at the enforcement, when we looked at like the 2014 area, mm -hmm. is there were definitely trees of size yeah. in that area. Through the area photographs, it's hard to see what's beneath that canopy mm -hmm. to know yeah. for sure what's there. Uh, but there were definitely larger woody things that were in there. Oh, any other questions from the public? Okay. Seeing not, do you have everything to close? Or we yeah, no, we, we, we do. Okay. Are you ready to close? Yes. Okay, so I, mean, so I, I, I just wanted to bring up sure. the performance bond thing. Is that something we put under our conditions? Yeah, it's something I, I, mean, I, I think tonight, if we discuss the order of conditions, we'll probably end up issuing at the the following meeting. Just yeah, I, mean, I like that. I like it. The, the, the language yeah. correct is it the is something added we, level of um, security. On the we do have that ability to, to require those. We, yeah. The last ones we've done them on are actually related to erosion control projects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, right. But we have the ability, and like Cormac said, the planning board. Yeah. No, I right. think it's and a standard condition on the planning board permits now mm -hmm. that you have a performance bond. So yeah. that's certainly within our ability to do. Brian, just one more question for you. Yeah. What are what are these like, half circles? Oh, that's the existing. Um, okay, that's uh, yeah, okay. Or, yeah, shrub line. Yeah. Doodles. Um, I, I'll just say this from experience. This uh, low grass, if it is in fact considered an invasive, I'm not sure rototilling it is the best idea. I think it's more mowing it down to as short as you possibly get it and then scraping yeah, it out yeah. and just scraping just taking up mini excavator with okay. a flat blade and scraping it out almost like sod yeah. cutting it out of there you want to get the roots and if you just rototill everything and the whole root structure mm -hmm. that thing's going to be in there and probably grow a crazy crop of low grass again so if that can just be maybe we can put that into the well I think that's something if, if they're looking to begin work as far as getting the trees and shrubs in yeah I think through the enforcement action, obviously you can continue now, but then also order that specific methodology as well as the installation of the trees and shrubs to be done through the enforcement action. Yeah. And then we can memorialize it again in the order of conditions so they can get started. Yeah. On the I mean, I'd like, it, yeah, I'd like to see when we can go from there. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see this get off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Without removing too much soil. So I would say before we finish, can 
you can continue it, but then if someone could make the motion to yeah. order that work done, just discussed and vote on that, that would clear up that section. We have that officially ordered to commence. Uh, getting the low grass removed and yeah. starting to plant the shrubs. Oh, the trees and shrubs, as shown on the, the planting plan. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then you're continued for your okay. Okay. Oh, you will. Are we closed or? Wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're closing. We closing, close yes. Okay. So then you can make a motion. So do we have a motion? Close. To close? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> motion to be moved. Yeah, yeah, just, just well, to clarify, yeah. we're, we're closing, but th that vote was That was added in. For the work to, to proceed. Yeah. So yeah. We don't have Excellent. to wait the 21 okay. day waiting period. Yeah. Thanks. Motion. Okay. Motion can close. Okay. okay, do we have a second? Yeah. Second. Okay, all those in favor of closing? Aye. 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 I got confused. I didn't catch that. Who made that motion to close? I think Dave did. Dave made the motion. Uh, who made the second? Uh, Aaron made the second. Okay. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you, Brian. Nice. Nice. Hey, Brian, can I get a hard copy of that? I All right. Good enough. Okay. Request for determination. Irene Parent, 139, Polk's Road. Determination to produce um, brush cutting. Um, so 139 Pulpus Road. Um, there's a isolated wetland that kind of borders Pulpus Road at the front of the site, and then off-site on the budding property, there's a, a, another isolated wetland that was um, approved back in 2010. And I think Bruce Perry went out and looked at the site. Yes, Laurentide did go out to the site and so confirmed that well. Um, so, and the, and the, the property is subject to a conservation restriction. The whole front of the property is, <coughs> is restricted. This, this kind of thing okay. is restricted. So, um, the area that's shown kind of in a, a waffle pattern is what they want to. There's an existing brush cut there now, so it's not really much more than what's there. Here, here. Yeah. 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 Here. Yeah. 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 Y
boundary area confirmation. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yes. That's really kind of the main crux okay. of this thing. But Bruce really checked those boundaries and he's okay. Yep. Bruce has gone out and reviewed those. And I we had a question so. about a, a pond next door that we kind of sorted out. But I think we're, we're there is a pond next there. door that was a, that was permitted. It's got a liner in it. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. So it's not a real, it's not a wet. It's not a, it's not a jurisdiction. It's a non-jurisdictional. Okay. Water resource. Um, any public comment on this one? Okay. So, oh, go ahead. Do you have a recommendation? Yeah, I would recommend a positive 2A confirming the resource area boundaries and the negative 3 allowing for the work without the notice of intent. So moved. Okay. Do you have a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, yeah, passes in line. <laughs> okay. Certificates. That's weird. Weird, weird. Certificates on compliance. I've never heard of that name. Vento, 87 Yale Point Road. Sorry. All right. So okay. this is All one. Right. Uh, you probably remember the Vento property, 87 Yale Point Road. Um, was one of the properties involved with the... Uh, the wooden wall of Yield Point that we removed mm -hmm. under an enforcement action. So this permit was the original permit for the installation of some core material in sand. And through that enforcement process, uh, because that this project didn't go in in entirety and left, that this order was valid for that. They've since re-permitted the structure that's in existence and never closed out this permit. So I can't tell you that it's in compliance, but that's why I would recommend that with this order, since it's not the active project, that we simply issue it as an invalid order of issue, oh. which closes out that order. Okay. <laughs> because they're, they're not going to be doing work underneath it, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, because there's an order of conditions that supersedes the project, and that's in compliance, um, so we would be simply just doing an invalid order of conditions on this one. Okay. Motion to... Approved the invalid order of conditions. Yeah, that's a new one. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, so pass it unanimously. Order of invalid. I like that one. Okay. Um, it's so much more capable than anything you can resign. Reskin, 34 Codfish Park. We have two of them. Uh, yeah, I think we could do kind of both these together. These both related to, I want to get them right in order here, sorry. Uh, the first one, the 2697, related to the kind of re renovation and expansion of the existing structure that was there, and the previous order of conditions was for the installation of a septic system, uh, an upgraded septic system within there. Um, both those projects have been completed and are in compliance. I would recommend that you could issue them both. We can do that at the same time. I move to issue um, the certificate of compliance for 34 Codfish Park and 34 Codfish Park. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes the hands. Orders of conditions. We got two, right? Um, yeah, we'll discuss 36 Pacamo. I did a draft for but, um, 45 Quidnet Road for Shook. Okay. So take one of no, no, for the, the structure off the Sackage Pond that's just getting kind of elevated in place. Uh, so from our comments last time, I included a, a condition that uh, the work is to be done by hand. Um, the materials within the 50 foot setback, uh, that the silt fencing shall be supplemented by hay bales or equivalent on the upper side of the silt fence. And then from our discussion last time, 
there was a concern about if the level of the pond got closer to the structure than what it is, um, that work get discontinued until that condition abates. So I have this number 20 that no work shall be done on the structure mm -hmm. if the water line of the pond is within 10 feet of the structure. Look like it's substantially away from that now. Um, hopefully, if the pond opening takes this time, they'll have lots of space to do it through the winter before it refills. But they also have the ability to come in and amend or modify that if it looks like they can take measures to, to do so. So hopefully, that's not a big problem. I think that assuages their concern. Any other concerns? Thoughts? And if I don't see any other thoughts or anything, you can add that in. Okay. Would anyone like to take make a motion on uh, 45 Quidnet Road? Move to approve the strategy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No opposed. That passes in the hands. All right, and then the other one, we'll keep going around. Uh, we obviously continue these three. Uh, we closed 36 Pacamo, and just for my notes, uh, the conditions that we were talking about here, um, once I get my email here working, um, we were looking for a condition that related to performance bonding, uh, one that went to requiring the filing of an extension perhaps, um, survivorship for the trees and shrubs to be in the kind of the 95% mm -hmm. ballpark, mm -hmm. um, for the remaining of the area something that quantifies if there's not loose soil about. So we're at percent coverage? Yeah. And movement. Yeah, yeah. No, obviously it would be a little bit of soil, but um, uh, weekly work logs and uh, weekly on-site inspection for what's going on, at least for the first part here. I mean, obviously, um, if they're just continuing work through the winter, we may still do a weekly inspection just to make sure we don't run into the same issues that we did with Humming Pond where the siltation measures fell into just total disrepair. Yeah, right. Is there silt fence in this job? Yes, there will be. Silt fence yeah. and they propose silt fence and hay bale. And hay bale. Yeah, hay bale. Um, and then that condition that we talked about right at the end that we ordered them to do the, the no roto tilling um, in relation to the love grass. Is there anything else people would like to see? Success, sort of. I know we didn't want to do enough specific success. Yeah, the success is that 95% yeah, survivorship. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, this, the, the road of filling, um, I mean, I'd like I'd like some, somebody to back me up on that. I, that's yeah. just from personal experience, you know, mm -hmm. with that stuff. Well, grass has an amazing ability to rebound. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. it likes being road of tilling. For yeah. soil structure, and uh, like, Soil species, it would be better not to roll the tail. I think, I think yeah. so. That's my inclination. So, I, I, you know, mm -hmm. I don't have any more scientific data to put it. I mean, it's all, I, I would almost, I would almost yes. say that that'd be a better way to go, honestly. I usually put for restoration projects a condition about if invasives are found in monitoring that they are removed. <laughs> that would be a better way to do it. Do we want to consider marking the 25 for future? I'm going to throw this out there. I don't know. Some people aren't going to like it, but I always think it'd be better to mow it, let it re-sprout, and then spray it with rodeo herbicide. Kill the grass. Honestly, that'd be a better way to go. Save well. the soil. <coughs> well, here we have we have two weeks. So. <laughs> well, you got to do this. Be you don't really because I no. So you want to you want to you got to do this before you start planting, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's probably, we're not going to get, there's not enough time to. You can't, you won't have time to do that. No, sorry, they're not going to do it. Well, they would agree. I mean, if we did that, you would just look at it in the spring. Well, I, yeah, I, I think you can have the options. They could do it now. You could see what comes up. Yeah. And then you would reserve the right and the order to order that work be done again using a different method. If it looks like doing it this way was a failure. Yeah. But that gives them a chance to get started, to be successful with it, and then if it looks like it's unsuccessful, to try something a little more drastic. So in their reporting of 
like how much is being removed from the site? Are we going to get like a, a dump scale report with how much they remove to try and quantify soil removal? <laughs> Who's doing it, John? I don't know. I'm not surprised. I don't know what this is. Ken doing it? No. Yeah. I'll throw this out there. Um, I was fortunate enough to get to do a tour of the airport's restoration areas, including the site where they basically bulldozed all this stuff off of it and um, you know smoothed the soil out so it was just bare soil. And... Um, I don't know if they even planted it or just left it alone. Of course, it's very flat out there, but it is gorgeous. It's unbelievable. It's the best restoration stuff I've seen on the island. I mean, including stuff, you know, we've tried to do, the foundation has tried to do, land bank. That, that is just, they've got blue so they just all over the place and a whole bunch of native forbs and things in there. Mm. They were just pretty much down to soil. They must have seen it. They must have collected some blue stuff right. somewhere. Mm -hmm. The difference mm -hmm. is that's almost like a natural succession to go from a soil substrate to this grassland orb area, whereas we're trying to jump to like wetland Wet shrubs and things, yeah. which is mm -hmm. a longer well, we, process. We have two weeks to think about it mm -hmm. as far as conditioning a change in method in the spring. I think we're probably set on the path a little bit for what we can do for right now. All right, so um, so I'd say if I would say the mini excavator taking the, the least amount of soil possible, I don't know how you can quantify that. I don't think there's a way to show that. No, I don't think there really is a way to do it. Okay. But I think it's I think it's a, I think it's a better um, so option think than, than rototilling it in. Because you're just going to really fill it in, and then what are you going to scrape out of there? You're going to get about 10% of the root structure probably. You're not going to your base. I know what's going to happen. They'll rotate it in and just smooth it out. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. Okay. So hopefully, if we're doing it with you know regular check-ins, we can at least see what's going on. I just yeah. try both ways and just see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Could be our own little science fair project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so I, I think I have a pretty good idea for what to put together, and then we can take another toy at the Apple okay. at the next meeting to issue it out. Okay. Well, just to the point of clarification, so don't do anything below draft in the next two weeks? No, I would say do do it, do it, yeah. do it how we ordered it done. Yeah, do it. Do it. Ernie's fetish with radio. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that agreeable, Brian? Take it, take a flat blade mini and scrape it, scrape it out of there. You suggest mowing. Yeah, yeah, if you want to, just mow it down as slow as you can, so you're not yeah. getting it all tangled up. It's just easier yeah. to do it. Yeah. 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 And if you need it on site with whoever's doing it, with you and I and whoever the contractor ends up being, yeah. I'm fine to do that too. I like the fire idea. The fire idea. Lizzie, you have a fire idea? I love fire. Let's move on. Okay, let's move on. Yes, that would be great. Okay, we're in uh, monitoring reports. All right, so we just put these again. We've been putting them on the agenda um, for you guys to take a look at. You don't have to like, take any action on it. I just want to make sure everyone saw them. We're trying to give people credit for them getting in and getting on the agenda. <laughs> Obviously, Art is in here, or, or, or Karen from the, the confound is in here. If you have any questions specifically, feel free to email them in, and I'll pass them along. But it's just more for your reading. Yeah. So there's no action to be taken. Well, the foundations report is very detailed. Yeah, yeah they get half. Yeah, mm -hmm. That, that project is <laughs> really interesting to kind of read all the reports through mm -hmm. to see how it's worked. It's yeah, really it's interesting. Cool. That's an interesting piece of land. It's good to see. I mean, it's That's a whole area outside there is anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Other business. Uh, approval of minutes. Anybody have any comments about approval of minutes? Okay. I will approve uh, by unanimous consent. Um, enforcement action. 
Yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Um, I, I left it on. I don't really have any updates on some of our uh, current ones, with the exception of um, Rachel had sent some information and wanted to speak briefly to some of the progress and activity that's going on out at the Holly Farm. You know, it's one of our regular permits, and we kind of kept the enforcement open on that. Explain what's going on. So, I guess I'll let you, yeah, I'll let you talk. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. Sorry. Okay. Hallowell. Okay. I mixed them up. Right. Hallowell, Holly Farm, they're all the same. We'll just we'll start with ages. Um, we did actually begin the, just so you know, at the Holly Farm, what is going on is uh, we have done the biochar. Um, that's been applied. The biochar application has been done, and Bright Latree did a whole series of soil tests again, and we have now smoothed most of most of, not all of, um, the areas that were disturbed and that we're planning on replanting and we got some plants from Serpent Hydrangea and began sort of a small, low-key installation today actually and we also worked on trimming out all the random privet in the holly stand itself and removing any extra cedar debris that was in the stand. So that all happened today. Um, I went out and I took a look at it and I do have some pictures but they're only on my phone so that's kind of useless. But um, it, it looks, I think, good. Our goal was not to be really too aggressive um, but to not, so not to make it look like it's a landscape um, but try and slowly reestablish the site over time. Mm -hmm. There were absolutely no marks in the wetland. They all laid down wood and drove wind on and there was no marks um, in that one majorly wet area. So I was happy with that. How did they apply the biochar yeah. on the surface, or did they not till it in at all? That's a good question. That's Maybe. all Bartlett, Maybe. and we had the same <laughs> discussion last time. But I do know what know what biochar is now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, hold on. so the other one that we are here to talk about, Hallowell Lane. This one's kind of interesting, and this is one that I kind of took care of in the interim. But Land Bank called and approached us about they were having an issue on Hallowell Lane where the driveway loops around with an abutter across the street essentially cutting themselves a little parking lot onto land bank property that's within commission jurisdiction. And the land bank, for lack of better terms, asked me, they said, we want to make it stop once and for all because they don't want the parking lot that's there. Um, so in the short term, before we came into the hearing tonight, I said I would be happy to issue out an enforcement on their behalf to discontinue the cutting and to install some sort of barrier to prevent it, whether it's stones or fences or whatever they need to, and then if they want to apply for a, some sort of management plan for the vegetation on their lot, that's their choice, but that we wanted the cutting to discontinue immediately um, to stop that from happening. So um, you guys don't have to choose to ratify that if you don't want to and tell me that I was crazy to do so. Um, but I thought at the time it was prudent, and then um, we just need to ratify that tonight. Um, if you guys think that was an appropriate course of action, you can order other things to be done. I'm sure Rachel has some pictures. I do. Um, but I think their plan right now was to install a barrier and then allow the area to just revegetate naturally for what it's worth. Um, we just know that it made till it or anything like that. They've just mowed it, and by the way, no, they did not actually till under the holly trees. It's all just yeah, so I don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we can sort of gather around or whatever. Um, anyways, we've had an issue, an ongoing issue with this neighbor, and we've sent we've sent letters and we've done lots of things. Um, one of the reasons that we decided to bring Jeff in on this is because we have some problems with the road layout and. Um, getting the area surveyed, and again, it is in wetland jurisdiction. There's a wetland on the far end of the site, so it's actually right down over here on the other side. This is Hallowell Lane, which is um, sort of behind Cliff Road, between the beach and Cliff Road. Um, and so we went around and around about different ways of approaching this encroachment issue and finally decided that we would be willing to, you know, take an enforcement order in an effort to actually get this to stop. 
so that's that was um, what we were did and I hope that works for you guys but it was really helpful because then we were able to put in some stones and um, not worry about road layout issues and I put up a sign that says restoration in progress and uh, if you if you'd like us to revegetate it we're getting pretty good at that now so we're <laughs> happy to do that we get at this point it's just basically turned into a mowed lawn so mm -hmm. um, but that's where we're at with this. How long did this go on for? Um, it's been going on for you know it's one of those things the line has been moving so mm -hmm. I would say it's over a year, maybe up to two years, but in the last six months or so, it's really radically been increasing over time. And now we've spoken with the landscaper who we saw doing it and said, you know, this is not your, you can't do this anymore. And some people were back in there to pulling out some shrubs and things like that. So it, it was just getting a little more extreme. And so that's why we decided that more action was necessary. So. This is correct. So they're treating this up. So, so how are you going to keep them from mowing that? Is it going to put up some sort of, I mean, besides the boulders? Well, we've put the boulders there, and yeah. we have spoken with the landscape company that yeah. we saw there and said, don't discontinue this. Yeah. Is this something that you need to, like, set up a game camera and be like, <laughs> you're going to be subject to police action? Well, I think I, I have a little bit of a this because I've been thinking about this because uh, Jeff Pollock and Rachel asked me the same question about what they have. And I think... On our end, um, what we have the ability to do now is the land bank has come to us and said, we are cutting our property. We've taken steps to not do this. Um, there's only two properties across the street from these places. There aren't many. That if the cutting continues, I think we've documented enough that we have the ability to take direct action against those property owners, right. not necessarily on behalf of the land bank, but on behalf of the commission to prevent a known wetland violation. Mm -hmm. And if it's really to that point and we feel that it's egregious and you know, I'll be honest at this point, if it's been warned in a pretty clear manner for us to order them to restore the area, I don't think is out of the question. I mean, and that may be, you know, them setting up a funding mechanism to essentially compensate the land bank to replant that with what the land bank feels is appropriate to do. And if they don't get the message from that, then we can start down punitive action and finding path. Um, to me, that's the real nice part about issuing them the enforcement on their behalf willingly, mm -hmm. is they're saying, it's not us, we have an encroachment issue, mm -hmm. it's across the street, we've warned them, we've told them not to, you've issued it up, we've blocked it off, now it gives us a little bit of a leg to stand on to go after the people right. requesting right. the violation. So I think that's okay. one that's benefit. Good. It's just a matter of a little bit of vigilance from the land bank's end and our end a little bit. I mean, they can call me and say, hey, they mowed it, and then I can say, all right, go to the commission. Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, so you have the enforcement action sort of drafted up? Well, the enforcement action is just our standard form. Yeah. Right. Uh, amazingly enough, I even had an extra sign form that most of you guys have already signed <laughs> from when we did one before. <laughs> I passed an extra one around on it. Like that. Um, like I didn't you. issue it. The only person that signed the original one that the land bank was hand delivered with me, um, which is the mm -hmm. conservation agent of the town I can do. It just needed to get ratified at the okay. end. So, so we need a motion to ratify motion the enforcement. To ratify it. And so, just to let you know, in the enforcement action, the direction we gave them was to install some sort of barrier yeah. and let it regrow. Yeah. So nothing crazy. So is that well, that's the, the stones rock considered a barrier? Yeah. That's what yeah. Well, what we've done now is we put in the stones. Um, we do have a surveyor who right now is probably three weeks out mm -hmm. from getting there, but we do want to kind of establish where the road edge actually is and yeah. what's our property yeah, so you know. before yeah. we do something more permanent. You know, we can't really put up a fence um, without actually knowing where that road is. Is that your intent? Is. That we certainly thing. can, and yeah. you know we don't have a problem Split with that. Split rail or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean we've definitely talked about that, but for the time being, until we have a surveyor out there and do some other yeah. things, our hands are a little bit tied. And much need to say too is we need an NOI. Yeah, we <laughs> to right. put a fence in. <laughs> well, they, they would need to. They would need, they, have to right. they would need a filing <laughs> above and beyond right. just to cover it. Yeah. Uh, that too. I would also say if a secondary enforcement is given out after this, you could have the opportunity to order a more official permanent barrier like fencing to be installed mm -hmm. but right. if, the land bank, if the land bank is happy with this I would be more than happy to say let it be see yeah. if it regrows and yeah. you know let mm -hmm. someone else go for the work 
if they really want to press it. So. And as with most encroachments, um, we have some really diligent neighbors that are really interested in seeing this stop. So they call frequently and let us know if things happen. And I guess as, as part of the active discussion really quick before we ratify, just a question for me in the future. Um, it sounds like this will get ratified. Is there any opposition from someone if we get, you know, one of the larger landowning groups like the confounder, the, the land bank that has an, an encroachment issue like this for me just to issue it out to get it to get something up to stop it in between meetings? I mean, I don't mind doing it. I think you should. I think they should. Yeah. should. Because I think that the I mean, land bank... should wait to come to a meeting. Yeah, yeah I think the land bank is has indicated to me that they have other spots where this may be occurring that we would like to work in tandem with to put an end to people using public lands for their own good and potentially violating the, the act or the bylaw, that if we can use this to just quickly set up ways to stop it in the short term and then come up with a plan to fix it if necessary, mm -hmm. we can, or more importantly, to put the violator on notice that Hey, we know what's going on. If it happens again, I'm passing the land bank as the property owner. The commission is going to come knock on your door, and then you're going to get to fix it. No one wants to do that. Okay, so we have a motion to ratify the enforcement order. Second. 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 Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any All right. Sadly, if you've already if you've already signed this one, you can keep passing. But I don't know. <laughs> I can't read anyone's signatures. <laughs> Would you such an ugly word? Sunday game, Sunday game. Sorry. It must have been one of the nights we issued multiple ones that. The signing. Know, the signing. <laughs> <That's laughs> <the signing. laughs> I think it's pretty good coverage. It's not ugly. <laughs> you can give us anything on the sign. Okay. That was probably one of those things where I put the mouth they stuck together and they started going. I don't know. It's all set. I've got an extra search before, too, <laughs> where it's just like the middle of the page that are together. It happens. This one just happens to be in the fourth. We can make a stick. Oh, it's back again. There you go. <laughs> and that's it Get for us. Get <laughs> That's it for us. Boy. Okay. Very good. Uh, reports. CPC? CPC. Uh, we've listened to the 22 applicants. And so next week comes the massive business of trying to... Um, Trying to shoot on $7.25 million worth of requests into a $2.25 million budget. <laughs> so <laughs> somebody's going to be unhappy. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Oh, well. Okay, MPDC, nothing to be mentioned. Uh, mosquito control, I don't think there's an issue there anymore. Uh, do we have any other, any other meeting member, boards? Okay. Oh, okay, commissioner comments? Yeah, I've, I've got something just. Um, it's sort of slightly tangential, but on NPR, um, you know, the, the um, news are a couple of times last week. There was an interesting vignette on um, on uh, wood chip bioreactors, which I'd never even heard of. Oh God! Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it <laughs> just it sounded. This is in Iowa where they're dealing with um, agricultural runoff, so they've started making what these wood chip bioreactors are are just basically long uh, trenches with wood chips that have been treated with um, bacteria so that the, the nitrogen runoff converts into binitrate oxide, which is harmless and is, is present in the atmosphere. And I thought, what a great idea. You know, maybe that's some way we should start trying to protect the harbor if necessary. Hmm. So... Um, I was with your permission. I'll send you a couple of links to find Jeff. <laughs> that sounds cool. Yeah. They were doing that on the Cape. Cape. And yeah. there are places they've done it on the Cape. It's done on the Cape. Yeah, it's an interesting idea. I, I didn't realize that. Yeah. So I can't remember. I thought it was like nitrogen. Detroit Bay, but I can't remember it somewhere over there where they hmm. nitrogen they traps. have such a huge influx of uh, nitrate coming yep. through the uh, groundwater. The thing is, you've got to get down into the groundwater. Yeah. So it depends on, you know, how deep the trench might have to be in how long is it good for before it's used up? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it seems pretty question. simplistic idea. Yeah. That, you know, as we're looking for all, every possible way to slow down uh, nitrate infiltration into the yeah. mm -hmm. just for some chips. Also, um, I don't know if you know Jim Thurlock, but uh, he 
he's uh, sort of a pool guy at this point, and I discussed what we had been discussing, and he sent me a really detailed, interesting email, which I was hoping to also forward on. Oh, cool. Well, um, I was hoping Cormac would stick around or Emily would be here, but they're not. Um, but we got a research application today from the Land Council and from the Pond Coalition to map the Phragmites on the ponds. And they want to do it with a drone that can take centimeter resolution photos or video, so little tiny, where they can not only see the the Phragmites, but because they take multiple pictures, they can use stereoscopic imagery and get heights. They can get a good estimate of volume. And the person that's doing it is experienced. He's done this other places. So but again, what they want to do is fly it, and then they can get a good handle on how much is there. And then you know they could do it post-treatment and get a large-scale success ratio. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. I don't know um, how much, any idea how much it costs. And I mean, I guess the real expense is developing the software. <coughs> the software yeah. to do this, this detailed imagery analysis and to do the 3D part. But they, they also offered to make the data available and results available to the conservation groups and stuff. So they'll be going over Audubon, Land Bank, Foundation property, as well as private property. So. For most of the groups, we have no no drone, you know, policies yeah. because we don't want people with recreation with right. drones. But right. this must be a fairly substantial drone to have that kind of camera in it. Oh, it has to have yeah, some pretty uh, high tech GPS for locating. Yeah, it's got to be very stable so too. You yeah. can't be bouncing all over. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting smaller. So you're asking us not to shoot it down if we're walking out there? So <laughs> yeah. My students were maybe going to be it. So. <laughs> you have to have this missile launch your shoulder thing. Well, well, I think the biggest thing, I before. guess, when right. it's all said and done, <laughs> is that house maybe when they get some of the water to come in and show what they did and kind of explain it, it would be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Emily contacted me, and they're going to be coming in and discussing the project with my students. And yeah, make right. the data available to the students as well to look at. Wow. So it's definitely, there's a big education piece. Yeah, yeah drones are so great tool. Put out to be evil, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have a good side to them. Yeah. Yeah. And poking in your bedroom window. I, I met those, are the <laughs> those are the ones. Yeah, you, what's that outside my window? <laughs> <laughs> they use them apparently in remote areas to monitor like eagle nests. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah they, the lens cranked. <laughs> yeah. It went down. No, they use them a lot for remote <laughs> sensing, especially for, for bird things. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean. Because yeah. you don't have to get that close to the nest anymore. You can keep quite a distance so it doesn't fluster the birds. Yeah, you want to stay away. So. Pretty cool. This guy is just the raptors here. taking the drones just right. out. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They did least turn nests by flying over. And they could spot how many birds took up off the ground and assume that every time a you know the birds cleared, that was a nest site. Uh -huh. And they could just they would disturb them once they'd fly over once, disturb them. I mean, the whole colony got disturbed, but it wasn't like we do it now where we got three people walking through right. this colony and mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. wear a hard hat. And <laughs> 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 I like the hard hat. <laughs> These turns aren't as bad as common turns, I guess. Common turns are. are these turns won't hit you. Yeah. They'll get close. They'll swoop on you. Yeah, they won't hit you. Yeah. Wiper, pretty wiper. good. They must have given the dive bombers the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I did it's just kind of daunting to have a bird come like fly straight at your face for a second and swoop up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People are very keen on that. <laughs> I was over at Tucker Nook with Simon Perkins, and there was a, a, a harrier chick that was just learning how to fly. And then there's mom up in the <laughs> She just folded up and was coming right at us. And Simon says, Don't worry, she don't, they, they never hit you. Just stand still, they never hit you. And so here's this bird coming right at us. <laughs> like a missile. Yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. and, it's, and he was right. They, you know, they pop up and they never hit you. I have a chance to get the gassy bird. Looking down at you. I was the first one so. here 50 times. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Some bird might be making a mistake.
They said on the Essex right? Ah, Wales, Italy. I guess it's <laughs> <laughs> No, I did have one observation on the way here, though. I wanted to mention uh, there was a tractor in the uh, in that revamped wetland at uh, Milbrook and um, Pumic Pond Road, and they were cutting along the, the fence line. It was like a fence between that the wetland and the field. I don't know whose tractor it was, but I'm assuming uh, it was Bartlett's. I'll find out. If it was Bartlett's, I'll talk to them. But they have Bartlett's have some weird rights over that property. Yeah, I was knowing and things. Um, they were right up against the edge of the fence. They weren't. Didn't yeah, I guess it was probably that. Yeah, they, yeah. they maintained when they gave the town the easement to do it. Part of it was that they were able to still cut along their fence lines. Yeah. Um, and then they made that project even more awesome when they sold the conservation restriction to the land council on that <laughs> piece of land. But they included the right to maintain all of their fence lines on all of their budding properties. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk. Probably what there was. I'll talk to John or Dave and see if, if it was them. They're usually like, yeah, look at the screws coming kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it didn't look like if it wasn't, I'll be there. I'll be there. I, I will be willing to bet money that it wasn't the town because they want to stay so far away from that place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be really surprised if it was like that. You didn't want to be there then either. <laughs> okay. And Victor even wants to stay far away from that place. Okay. So we have a motion to adjourn. I don't see any other. Is he what? So we'll Second. Second. Um, By the favor, I. <laughs> <laughs>